Yo, welcome back to the gavel. We are still revisiting the postponement of 2015 elections. And this time, we sat down with the Reps Minority Leader, Representative Femi Bajabia Mila, to get his thoughts on this issue. Nobody's contesting the right of uh, Minec to, to, to postpone elections. Um, uh, but, but what's contesting the circumstances uh, of the postponement? And the larger implication uh, to the to, to the society uh, within the context of Nigeria and even international. Uh, um, from what we've heard, INEC has said categorically they postponed because of um, um, security uh, concerns by security chiefs. And for a lot of us, uh, we're wondering where that came from. Um, it's a, it, it's almost a. a a, a, an admission on the part of the security for the first in the first place that they cannot protect Nigeria. Um, second of all, uh, why would you talk about security implications when a week, just a week before, um, the security chiefs had said that they were good and ready um, for the elections? Um, let's not even go to the question of whether the military have a role to play in elections, uh, in conduct of election or not, which they don't clearly. Both constitutionally, if you look at you know the constitution, uh, the, the the role is limited to the territorial integrity, uh, safeguarding the ter territorial integrity of Nigeria, uh, and elections is not part of that. And there has been a, a recent court decision on that, a federal high court decision that the military has no role um, in elections. Um, the role, if any, uh, for elections will be the police. Um, that is constitutionally empowered to safeguard law and order. Uh, so, so the two, the two, the, 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 the two steps to this. First, does the military have a role? Which clearly the answer is no. But let's even go to the point of the, uh, for argument's sake that yes, they do have a role. Um, and there's so many things that could have been done. If it was for security reasons, uh, for instance, why couldn't the military, for instance, the presidential election is a one-day affair? It's a one-day affair. Even if you are, you're, 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 you're busy in the Northeast, you can take that one day, a few hours, out and go back the next day. Uh, so I, 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 we, we find it a, a pretext for not wanting to hold elections uh, in the face of what is apparent on ground. Uh, and it's very unfortunate that um, uh, Nigerians can be taken for granted. And it's very interesting that uh, PDP and the government knowing and seeing now that that did not fly um, with Nigerians have now tried to change the narrative and the conversation to uh, um, the uh, postponement of election because INEC was not ready. Um, INEC has said they were ready. And the reasons why we, we should believe that they were ready um, in spite of the fact that uh, some PVCs were yet to be collected, uh, which would have been collected by the, by the time of election anyway. Uh, 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 so it's, 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 for me, it's, it's a very sad situation. If you look at the letter from the military, which I've had the privilege of, uh, um, of getting a, a glimpse, it's, it, <coughs> it said uh, they were, they were, uh, they advised INEC that um, they would need they chose their language very carefully. They will need at least six weeks, and they went on to say, in the first instance. When you look at those two key phrase, uh, words, at least six weeks, and then in the first instance, you can see that they're setting the stage for even an, an eventual cancellation. Uh, come six weeks, they can tell you that they're not ready. Uh, but I think um, they will be very, very surprised. If you, if you, if you, if you, if you, if you stack that against what the recent audio in Ekiti that is going around now, you can tell that. And I, and I, and I make bold to say that our military is compromised. Stack it against DSS, invasion of the APC headquarters, you can tell that all our security agencies are, are compromised. Uh, and free and fair elections, I mean, uh, supposes or presupposes that those neutral bodies that are paid by taxpayers remain neutral uh, for Nigerians to be able to choose um, um, whoever they want to, 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 to lead them. So um, it's, it's, it's a bad omen. Um, uh, the Secretary of State of the United States was here a couple of weeks ago. He was giving assurances even by the president and by everybody that the elections would go on. And they have since expressed their disappointment. Uh, uh, 
I don't want to call it that you lied to the to the international world. I don't, I don't want to call it that. I'll be very more charitable than that. But at least you told them. Well, at best, you told them half truths. Okay. Now, if I was to also take you up on the issue of the um, tenure of um, the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, is this whole thing going around as, as to whether he should proceed on terminal leave or he, he can't or he shouldn't and all that and all. That. Well, first of all, I've heard a lot about Jega not being there, Jega being replaced, and all that. Uh, from a, first of all, from a moral standpoint, I think it will be a grave mistake. It will be absolutely immoral. Uh, it will send the wrong signal, perhaps even the right signal, to Nigerians that uh, uh, um, that this government is not prepared to conduct um, a free to conduct free prevalent elections, because you don't change the umpire at the last minute, and then it will, it, it will, it, it, would, it would appear that you postpone the election just to, uh, just to achieve that objective. And that would, that would not sit well with anybody, yeah, even, even the most sympathetic of um, the government's um, supporters. It, will not sit, it should not sit down with them. Uh, that's on a moral standpoint. On a legal standpoint, I, 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 it is my considered opinion. Uh, and I believe uh, verily that uh, Jaga is not a civil servant. They're trying to apply the civil service rules, and Jaga is not a civil servant. Jaga is a creation of the Constitution. Under Section 157 and 160 of the Constitution, the, 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 it's very clear how Jaga can be removed in whatever guise, very explicit, very express. Um, you cannot input in the Constitution what is not there. And the only way Jaga can be removed, well, in any way, is uh, uh, not even by the president. The, 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 the two thirds of the Senate initiates that process, not the president. And then the president will now either accept or, or not accept. But it has to be initiated by two thirds of the Senate. Uh, a lot of people have said, well, the governor of Central Bank was suspended, the same thing, terminal leave, whatever. I said, I, and I say there's a difference. The governor of Central Bank was not a creation of the Constitution. The Governor of Central Bank was a creation of an act of parliament, and the rules and regulations are contained there in the act. Uh, so he's even more quali you can, he can, he can, he can be classified, if you like, as a civil servant under Section 171 of the Constitution, which enumerates and states clearly the, 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 the umbrella bodies or organizations that you can consider a civil service, and uh, INEC is not one of them. Um, so I, I, I think it will be on very, very, very shaky uh, or non-existent legal grounds to attempt to remove or send him on a so-called uh, terminal, terminal leave. Um, and more importantly, I'm made to understand speculation, that is, that um, he will be replaced by somebody who supposedly is a brother to the sitting governor of... Um, a PDP governor, um, Governor Mimiko. Um, I don't want to believe that because I want to believe that the, the, the president has uh, uh, some serious advisors um, who know the law and who understand the moral implications of that if that does happen. Um, uh, back to our constitution, if you look at the code of conduct in, embedded in the constitution, the very first provision of the code of conduct says that uh, a public officer shall not put himself um, in a position where his personal interest conflicts with his, um, with his duties and responsibilities. I mean, it, it, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to, 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 to determine that if you're the brother to an avid supporter of the president, the chances are that, um, you, that there's an inherent conflict. And so that would, again, uh, be unconstitutional. And so these are the things. I, I think Jaga, I would qualify Jaga as a public servant as opposed to a civil servant. And I think there's a difference. For instance, I'm not a civil servant. I'm a public servant. And if you cannot ask me to go on terminal leave, you know, so, they, so they, 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 the people should not confuse and the presidency should not confuse the two. Okay, yeah. if I was to take you on those who say that, well, um, Iwo did, uh, Professor Morris Iwo, who was a past INEC chairman, had proceeded on such a terminal leave. That, so what is the whole issue now? Well, my, 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 my response to that would be two. One, um, 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 the issue of uh, Maurice Iwo was actually debated on the floor of the Senate. 
Um, so I think it might have been something that was initiated by the Senate as prescribed in the, in, in, in the Constitution. It was actually debated on the floor of the Senate. Uh, that's number one. Number two, if it was done illegally, it, it, it does, if, if something is done illegal, illegally, we, we don't want to perpetuate illegality. If we found out that it was illegal or it was unconstitutional, we don't continue on that road. We don't continue on that road. We have to make progress. The ruling People's Democratic Party, PDP, lost six seats in the House of Representatives as lawmakers resumed plenary after the recess. The lawmakers defected to four other parties, the All Progressive Congress APC and the Labour Party, which gained two members each, and the All Progressives Grand Alliance APGA and Accord Party, which gained a member each. This current defection gives the All Progressives Congress APC a clear majority in the House, bringing their number to 181 members against the now 156 to which the ruling party PDP has been reduced. Other parties in the House now share 23 seats, with the SDP occupying 10, the Labour Party 5, APGA 4, PDM 2, and the Accord Party 2 seats. Exchange of pleasantries as members of the House of Representatives resumed plenary after a five weeks recess. No sooner than the day's proceedings began, the Speaker of the House announced notices of defection from six members of the ruling People's Democratic Party to four other parties. Robinson Uwak from Al Kwaibum and Mohammed Ibrahim from Jigawa defected to the APC. Tobias Okuri Ochukwemeka and Peter Ali, both from Ebony State, moved to the Labour Party. Ap and Umor from Kwaibum defected to a court party, while Chineye Eke from Abia State defected to Abga. The factions that gave the All Progressives Congress a clear majority in the House of Representatives. In his welcome address, the Speaker of the House reminded the House of the crucial tasks before them, which ought to be concluded before the dissolution of the 7th Assembly, such as the 2015 Appropriation Bill, the Constitution Amendment Bill and the Electoral Act Amendment Bill, which is said must be expedited. Clearly, the stress is not any less on our constituents and indeed the generality of Nigerians than it is on us. Let me remind us that the first crucial task before us is the 2015 budget proposal, which is at committee stage. I urge that the belated submission notwithstanding, we owe our country a duty not only to pass this appropriation bill speedily, but also with due diligence and thorough scrutiny. As we deliberate, we must take cognizance of the prevailing global economic realities. Furthermore, remember that for the Seventh Assembly, this is the last budget we will pass and we need to leave a mark of diligence in this regard. Besides the 2015 budget, sim besides the 2015 budget, similar diligence is required for other critical bills before us. Notwithstanding the limitation of time, I'm confident that we shall pass the Petroleum Industry Bill, PIB, the Constitutional Amendment Bill, and similar such critical bills that are already at report stage. Also of the utmost urgency is the Electoral Act Amendment Bill, which has already been passed by the two chambers. The House of Representatives has already constituted a harmonization committee, and I believe that the Senate will do the same expeditiously so that we can wrap up soonest. This is very critical as the amendments contained therein provide the clear legal framework for participation in the electoral process by internally displaced persons, IDPs, whose numbers are no doubt substantial. The House adopted the fourth alteration of the Constitution Bill 2014, following the presentation of the report on the resolutions of the State Houses of Assembly on the amendments to the 1999 Constitution and the motion raised by Deputy Speaker of the House, Emeka Ihedioha, and 52 other members. The House resolved to pass the bill and transmit to the Presidency for assent as soon as possible. Now this is where we draw the curtains on this week's edition of The Gavel. If you have any views on any of the issues discussed, please email us on thegavel at channelstv.com. Thank you for staying with us and see you again next week.